Well, once we get them through pre-K and the regular K through 12 system, how does higher education fit into this? How can we continue to improve and grow a higher education system while keeping college affordable and accessible to more people? In the last decade in Tennessee, in inflation-adjusted dollars, in real dollars, uh, the cost of higher education essentially has doubled. Uh, we're now at the point where there are young people and not so young people who want to go to college, want to uh, study in Tennessee, and are finding it extraordinarily difficult to do so because the, of the cost, as, as the cost have gotten up. There are a number of things we can do and a number of things we should do. The first thing uh, I guess I should say is that I'm not big on spending. Uh, I do believe in investing. Uh, in my family, we get a new pickup truck every 22 years, whether we need one or not. Granddaddy got one in 54, Daddy in 76, I got one in 98. It has 362,000 miles on it. As one of my colleagues once said, a, a, a car or a truck, is, is, it's not a, an investment, it's an expense, and that's how we treat them. I'm not big on spending, uh, but I am big on investing, and I recognize there are investments that should be made, and we've got to make some distinctions and understand the difference. Now, truth be told, some of our friends in higher education have not been good stewards of the tax dollars, the tuition dollars, and the private gifts. Uh, there's been debacle after scandal after mis misfortune. Uh, I remember up at uh, UT Knoxville in the $10,000 gas grill that, uh, you know, I won't ever get over reading about that and hearing about that and working with some of my colleagues we passed legislation to require that there would be audits in higher education to make sure these kind of expenditures are caught quickly, uh, these sort of misappropriations of funds. Uh, there have been, uh, we had a president uh, who was flying out of state to see his girlfriend at taxpayer expense and we've, it, it, they're just, there have been abuses. And when citizens out here are working hard to pay the taxes, uh, they don't appreciate it, finding out that there's another class that lives by a different set of rules, partly at their expense. Uh, those in higher education have a, a responsibility, a moral responsibility, to be good stewards of the taxpayer dollars, the tuition dollars, and the donors' dollars. Uh, and I think we're going to have to make sure that those places where we can cut spending, we do. And then we've got to make sure we make the right investments. Uh, if we do that right, there are efficiencies of scale. Uh, I'm amazed at, quite frankly, at what some of the community colleges like Fall State are doing now as your numbers are swelling. I know it's extraordinarily challenging for your administrators, for the faculty members, for the, the staff, the people that are working here. But we're seeing that there are increased efficiencies because y'all are making it happen. You're doing more with less uh, in amazing ways. And we can do some of that to see that our, our citizens get the education. The administrators have to do more with less. but. We ought to ask more of our students, too. For too many of our students, they take their time. They've gone from graduating in four years to five years to six years. A lot of times when it could be avoided, not just because they've had hardship or, or economic difficulty, but quite frankly because they've been goofing off too much, drinking too much, carousing too much, and not working hard enough. And the students have an obligation to get to work, do their classes, get out of the way, let somebody else come on and have their chance at education, too. If the administrators do right, and the students do right, I believe the faculty will step up and, and, and do their part too. And we can, we can do more with less in higher education, and I think we will. At the same time, I, it needs to be said, uh, uh, higher education is absolutely crucial. Vocational, technical, and traditional higher education, college and, and uh, university education, is absolutely crucial to our future. Governor McCordy used to say that schools plus roads equals jobs. And that was true in the 20th century, and it's still true today. But today, in these 21st century jobs, in addition to schools plus roads equaling jobs, it's got to be higher education, education after high school, higher education plus information highways equals jobs. That's where our future is. Another important subject is health care. Um, if the federal health care reforms shift some of the cost to the states, how do we pay for any mandated increases in tank care? I think Governor Bredesen has been absolutely right to speak out against some of the proposals in Washington that would not fund health care. They would send the responsibility and the burdens back to the taxpayers in Tennessee. It would be particularly disproportionate and devastating for Tennessee, uh, not being one of the richer states in the country. It would be even more of a hardship on us if they send the bills to us but, and, and the responsibilities, but without sending the funding that's necessary. So I, I applaud Governor Bredesen for that. I think he is exactly right. When I was 13 years old, I came home one day and my father was laying on the floor in our house and they rushed him to the, to the hospital. 
The cardiologist later told my mother, if he'd been 10 minutes later getting to that hospital, he would not have survived. He made it to when I was in my first year of law school. Big difference between losing your dad when you're 13 in your first year of high school and in your first year of law school. Having access to affordable health care uh, is crucial to all of our families. I've known that since I was 13 years old. Our twins that just started college uh, in uh, September, uh, our twins would not have survived if we hadn't had access to health care, if we hadn't been able to get the best quality health care with a super physician named Sal Lombardi who did a tremendous job of diagnosing their problem, providing hour after hour of care to get my wife through that pregnancy and to, and to see that those babies survived. They spent 28 days in the NICU at Vanderbilt at the NICU, the neonatal intensive care unit, and they're doing great today. Uh, but without access to health care, they would not have survived. From my father to my sons, I understand how important health care is to people surviving and to people having a future. We've bankrupted too many families in Tennessee and across this country, and we need to figure out how to get this done and get it done right. Now, I don't underestimate the ability of the government to mess things up. The law of unintended consequences seem to, seems to apply uh, in spades uh, when government's in, involved. But I'll tell you this, when we live in a society in which if somebody commits rape or murder, they have access to health care. If they're on welfare, they have access to health care. Uh, if they're seniors, thank goodness, like my mother, they have access to health care. If they're young enough children, they have access to health care. But the people that are willing to work as hard as they can to pay their bills, to do right by their neighbors, and to give an honest day's work for an honest day's pay, they ought to be able to afford health care too. I don't know what, we'll, what they're going to do in Washington, and obviously what they do will have a huge impact on the next governor, the next budgets, the t all Tennesseans. If I am governor, my commitment is to try to make sure that working people are willing to work hard, pay their bills, do right by their neighbors. I'll, everything, I'll do everything I can to make sure they have access to adequate health care for their families too. Well, along those lines, um, you have spoken about strengthening the penalties against Medicaid fraud and protecting whistleblowers who expose Medicaid and health insurance fraud. How serious a problem is this? I'll give you one example. I uh, represented a, an employer not uh, terribly long ago uh, where uh, one of their employees came to work and within a few days he claimed he'd been injured on the job. Turned out he had not. There were two witnesses that said he had not. Uh, it had not happened as he said. When we got into, into uh, the litigation, and I was representing that employer, we took this uh, worker or would-be worker's uh, deposition. And the bottom line was we found out that he had taken, while on our, at our expense, because he had TenCare uh, over those preceding years, and at the very time he was working for, for my client, and he had gone and filled uh, pain medications, literally from the Tri-Cities part of this state out to Las Vegas, Nevada. The independent medical examiner, the physician who looked at all the records and, and looked at this gentleman, said if he'd taken a third of the medications that he'd gotten filled, uh, he would have uh, already been dead. Now, what he was doing was he was taking the medications at our expense, selling them, using them, getting high. Uh, there's an enormous problem with fraud in this state. Uh, working with my colleagues and, and with Tennessee's pharmacists, quite frankly, in a bipartisan way, we passed the prescription uh, medication Monitoring Act, Controlled Substance Monitoring Act. And so we have a new, new tools now that we can use uh, to try to crack down on that kind of abuse of prescription medications. But it's an enormous problem. Uh, it's a problem with those who are selling the drugs. It's a problem with teenagers that are abusing the drugs. I know in my own community I've heard tale after tale, unfortunately, from teenagers uh, who were t telling me about other teenagers who were uh, abusing uh, prescription medications that they, they found in their parents' uh, 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 medicine cabinets. Uh, it's an enormous problem. We've got to stay after it. The, the uh, Monitoring Act is one tool that's helping. We've got, got to continue to pursue uh, ten care fraud everywhere we find it and, and these kind of abuses wherever we find them. I wish we had more time to follow up with some other questions. Um, obviously there are many other things that we'd like to ask you about today. Um, some gun laws and some conservation, but we appreciate your time. Um, so thank you very much for joining us today. Um, if you would like more information on the Roy Heron for Governor campaign, you can log on to his website at RoyHeron.com. And if you would like to watch this program again or review other programs in our series covering the 2010 governor's race, we have a link on our website at ballstate.edu forward slash inside politics. 
We hope you will join us next time here on Inside Politics. For more information about the guests on this show, please visit our website at ballstate.edu forward slash inside politics.